Hello, friends and family. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry, and today is lesson number eight in our Investigating Faith. Praise God. We're going to find out more and more about faith. You're going to utilize these principles every day. Your life is going to get bigger and bigger and better. And what I want to talk to you today about is why trust God. You might say, okay, I know what the Word of God says. Um, about my solution, about my situation, about my problem. I, I know that. But why should I trust God when the word is so contrary to my experience? I know about that. The doctors at Kaiser Hospital in 1975 gave me two years to live. I felt like I could die any moment. And so I had to learn to walk by faith, not by feeling. Go by what God says. So let's review the following facts, okay? Um, I don't know if I'll say number one or not, but since faith comes by hearing the Word of God, Romans 10, 17, let's see what God says about the integrity of His Word. In Numbers 23, 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that He should lie, neither is He the Son of man that He should repent. Hath He said, and shall He not do it? Or has He spoken, and shall He not make it good or bring it to pass? I like also... Um, Isaiah 55, 11, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall not return to God empty or barren or unfulfilled or not manifested, but it shall accomplish that which I please, God said. It shall prosper in the thing that I send it. So God's word on prosperity will prosper you. God's word on healing will heal you. God's word on favor will give you favor. God's word on peace will give you peace. God's word on wisdom will give you wisdom. So whatever it is you need, you find the verses that promise you what you need and use the principles that we've already been discussing for several days. Uh, and, and it's going to work. It's going to manifest. Luke uh, 1, 37 Rotherham's translation says, No word of God is void of power. God's word is like a seed. A tomato seed has within it the power to produ produce a vine and tomatoes, okay? And so God's word is like a seed. It produces after its own kind. Jesus said in, in uh, John 6, 63, I think it is, 8, 63, 6, 63, that the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Man, when you're getting the word of God in you, you're getting life words, baby. And when you speak them, there's power right there. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away, Matthew 24:35, Jeremiah 1, 12, it's, King James says, I will hasten my word to perform it. But other translations say it more clearly, I will watch over my word to perform it to you, says the Lord. What is God doing in your life? He's watching over his word to perform his word in your life. And so if you fill yourself with the word of God and the promises of God for what you personally need and you rehearse it, then God's going to start performing what you've been studying and filling yourself with. Psalm 119, verse 89, 89, I think, 89, says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You know what our task is? Get it settled on the inside of us. That's the, that's the harder part, amen? Uh, Ezekiel 12, 25 says, I am the Lord. I will speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass. Amen. The Apostle Paul told those guys in Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, that the word of God effectually works in you. It's effectively working in you. I don't see any difference, Pastor Glenn. I've been, for, for all these eight lessons, I've been doing what you said, and I don't see any difference. Well, if you had a puppy, and I came over to your house, at the first time you brought the puppy home, I would see it. If I came back in two weeks, I'd go, wow, your puppy has really grown. You'd say, no, it hasn't. It's exactly the same way as it was because it's subtle, the growth of that puppy. The, sometimes the, the, the growth of faith is subtle, okay? And one of my favorite verses that I use on my podcast nearly every day is uh, Acts 20, 32. 
the Apostle Paul knew he wasn't going to see the, these other believers again. He said, I commend you to, to God and the word of his grace, God's word of grace, is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So we want our inheritance. Jesus died to give us stuff right now. Obviously, there's greater stuff in heaven, but God wants you to have a great life right now. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. And so God's in the on position. And, you know, I used to think, God, why does it take so long? I, I thought God was like a dinosaur moving super slow, but God's not the one dragging his feet. Second Peter 3, 9 tells us that, that God is not unfaithful to forget. Uh, no, I'm quoting the wrong verse. He's basically, he said that, that He's not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us word. In other words, God's waiting on you. God's waiting on me to, utilize, to grasp these principles, these steps of faith, and utilize them and apply them because he wants to materialize them. Amen? So you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. Maybe that's, that's a slap in the face. It was to me. I know that. And so God's going to make good what he's spoken. If you believe him and you, you listen to these videos and apply what's being said, then God's word has to prove true because all of his promises are yes and amen. And so the two greatest established facts in the universe, I guess I could say, is that God, uh, God's word is true and God is true to his word. Titus 1-2, I like that. It says, God cannot lie. Some, some idiotic people say, can God, if God can do anything, can he make a rock too big for himself to move? Well, that's kind of stupid, right? And so one thing we got to know is that God cannot lie. And for that reason, you should make up your mind to believe God and, and to work, go to work at once on purpose, putting the word of God in you that you have need of. Look up the cross references, read the stories, and remember that faith comes into your heart and mind by hearing and reading and speaking and listening to and affirming God's word. Do that as much as possible. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. We're teaching on principles and investigating faith, principles of faith and investigating faith, CSI, Christ Seen Investigators. And just keep watching and tell your friends about uh, this, vi this video and this whole series, really. Praise God. If you, if you would, please like below, subscribe. If you have questions, ask them, and I promise you I'll get back to you. Have a great, great day.